Hey yo everybody, Prod Charles here. In this video, I want to share a few tips, tricks, and hints on how to get $20,000 really early in the game Beholder. I've been playing this game pretty much non-stop since it came out, and I am so addicted to it. So addicted that I came up with these strategies and tactics to actually get $20,000 and over, because sometimes you will need over, depending on your decisions, in the beginning of the game. So the first thing I want to share is, while you're doing things, make sure you're doing things. For example, when you're knocking on the door, waiting for somebody to come to the door, it takes them like 30 minutes, 30 in-game minutes, to get from one side of their apartment to the next. So a smart thing to do will be, while they're making that long trip, you move around the map doing everything else that you need to do, perhaps even performing a profile or talking to somebody to complete a quest or getting an item or whatever. Just do something. I also think that if you stay idle in the game for a certain amount of time, you will actually be picked up by the police because you'll be uh, booked under negligence, I believe. It's actually a condition of the game to keep doing something. You can't stay idle for a long amount of time. The next thing I want to share is when you're doing nothing or when you have reported somebody, do profile some tenants when you're waiting for the police to get there because you do get $100 per profiled item. That is, whenever you find out something about somebody and then you profile that thing, you will get $100. And it's better to do these in bulk, but if you're just sitting around doing nothing, it's much more efficient to just get it done while you're sitting there doing nothing. This will require a lot of clicks, but it's worth it in the end because the money builds up much faster and it builds up your morale a bit more, seeing your bank account gradually get bigger as you play. There's also blackmailing like mad, so this is especially good when there are two people, there are two tenants in an apartment. If you can find an illegal item in an apartment with two tenants in it, I usually exploit this with apartment number one, the one that Klaus is in. I plant an apple or I find the illegal book or whatever and then I blackmail both of them for that. I do as many blackmails as possible and remember when you blackmail someone you can only blackmail them for one item so be careful with how you do this because you might unintentionally make them want to move out if you keep on trying to blackmail them for the same item. And this isn't really a good thing. It's a good idea to blackmail as much as possible, especially in apartments that have two tenants. And it's good to bomb your blackmails. What I mean by a blackmail bomb is doing multiple blackmails at once. So if you can find multiple illegal items, it's efficient to stash all of those in your file and then blackmail each one one after the other straight away. And sometimes they fulfill the requirements for each blackmail in one hit, which is really good because it means you get your money faster. If you don't know, when they get blackmailed, any tenant, whenever they get blackmailed, they go out to the flower pot and leave $1,000 for each blackmail. Also do remember that for each blackmail that you do, you cannot repeat the blackmail for that same item, unless it's for a different tenant. So if there are two tenants living in one apartment, it's a really good thing to blackmail them both at once for the same things. If you want to chain a blackmail into a report, which is another really great tactic, you can use the exact same item that you use to blackmail as the one that you use to report. While they're out giving you your money, you can enter their apartment, check the place, which is usually the first piece of furniture nearest to the door, where you've planted, say, an apple or something, and check that as illegal again in your profile, and then run and report them straight away. And this is really good, especially if you suspect them of leaving. But if you perform this efficiently, then no one should want to leave at any point. I think I read some things out there that said that you should re-steal items that you blackmail with or you report with, but I think it's more cost efficient to just leave them there, especially if it's just an apple or if it's the ties later in the game. The only items that I would recommend re-stealing are the foreign music, the soda, and the salt if you happen to need to use that before the 20,000 mark again, as you can set up really strong blackmail bombs with these. Next up, whenever you get an NPC quest, it's a good idea to complete the quest when there's 24 hours or less remaining, but try not to go under 24 hours if possible. This is just to maximize the amount of time that you have between each quest, and it's still a good idea to do quests because Quests will give you reputation, which you can convert into money, and some will also give you money itself, on top of reputation or just money. Something that I think a lot of people don't look out for is that when a reported tenant is taken to jail, there will be a box containing all of the things in their apartment left behind besides the illegal item that you booked them for. So it's a good idea to take that box and sell everything that's inside it, unless it's an illegal item or something that can be set up to be illegal later on, like the foreign music, the salt, the, the foreign soda, the 
propaganda book, fish, stuff like that. It's a really good idea to take these items because they can be used again to blackmail and report people or just to be sold for a high price later on. On the topic of fish, it's a good idea to take the fish from the marine that moves in. I forgot his name. I think his name is Jones or something. But whatever it is, the marine army dude that uh, has to leave in like two weeks or something, get his fish and sell it straight away to the merchant. Don't choose the option asking him to take it from you and then sell it to give you the profits. Just sell it to him straight out and it's an easy three grand. And it's the perfect way to get a huge stash of cash early. It covers nearly one quarter of the amount of money you need, which is ridiculous. Now onto some quest advice. I wouldn't recommend doing any of Patrick's missions except for the school book quest. Even though they neg your rep, for some of his quests, you need to spend way too much money. For example, there's several quests where you need to spend $20,000 for Patrick's missions and they all lead nowhere. They're all... Patrick's line of quests are just, with trying to keep it as spoiler free as possible, are just worthless. Don't even bother with them. The only one that I would bother with is the school book quest, because pretty much everything in the game works against Patrick, except for getting his school books. <laughs> and the school book quest can give you rep, which you can convert later to money. Also, do not complete any of Martha's quests until she needs to see a doctor, but do find the doll that she's looking for and sell it. She's going to get sick, nothing's going to stop her from getting sick, and it's a waste of money to try and find all of these items to get her well again when she's just going to get sick and you'll have to drop $20,000 to save her. The next point I want to make, which is something I've been reiterating throughout the guide, but I think it's a good idea to make a certain point for it on its own, is converting reputation to money. This is usually done with cameras and they're not really required until later in the game, so it's okay to sell them when you can in bulk for like $150 per stage one camera. There's no need to keep an eye on the tenants all the time. It can come in handy, but I don't think it's very efficient to spend reputation on cameras because you can get more money from cameras from selling them than you can from reporting them. For example, say you got a camera and you found one extra thing that you could profile for one of the tenants. That would be $100. Whereas if you just sold the camera straight out, you'd get $150, that's $50 extra. It'll get you to your goal faster and you won't feel like you're wasting too much time. You can get through the game faster, which is what we want. And the final thing, which isn't that huge, but I wanted to include it anyway, is always pause when you're reading through your quests, your profiles, and your documents. Always, always pause. If you let the game just do its thing, then you're losing time on your quests and you're losing time on whenever the, the illegal vendor dude is available. The one that appears at the bottom left of the apartments and sells you illegal stuff. You always want to take every opportunity you can to sell and buy stuff from him. Unless there's absolutely nothing that you can do with him, then it doesn't matter. But just in general, it's always good to pause when reading quests, profiles, and documents. I am going to leave this video off with some footage of me actually putting these tips into practice, and I hope that you enjoyed this video and found some value in it. If you did, you may enjoy some of my videos from other games like Yomawari Night Alone and Rusty Lake Roots where I go through some tips, tricks and just generally playing through those videos and I upload stuff like this at least three times a week. So if you want to see more, then subscribe. Once again, I hope you enjoyed this video and see you later. See ya!